Um, we'll go right from the start. Uh, we see the Nimzo Indian, which is characterized by Black's Bishop jumping out and pinning the White Knight. This has been uh, a key ingredient in nearly every top player's opening, opening uh, repertoire throughout the years. And uh, after e3, the move bishop to d2, just avoiding white's pawn structure being damaged on the, on the c3 square. Um, this yeah, became fashionable in the last few years. I guess players were uh, just frustrated at having to enter any long forcing lines. This is known to be very positional. White just uh, often tries to take the bishop pair, as we see very shortly, and uh, aims to eventually complete kingside development. But black says, yes, you've got my bishop. I'm going to get yours in return. Knight to e2 defends that bishop and uh, ensures the pawn structure stays intact. And now pawn to d5. And um, there are various moves here for black, one of them being bishop to a6, just attacking this pawn on c4, which is slightly loose temporarily. Um, there are ideas in the near future, for example, um, there we go, bishop a6 by Prague. And uh, I was actually going to point out one of Magnus Carlsen's um, ideas was to actually sacrifice a pawn recently um, in the World Cup by playing the move f3, which looks like a blunder to everyone at home. Um, it looks like, whoops, you've walked into a simple double attack. Bishop takes c4 now, and queen h4 is a nice trick. Check, um, hitting the bishop as well. But Magnus introduced what I believe was a novelty um, against his countryman Ariantari by playing h4 in this position and saying, I'm a pawn down, but I don't care. I'm going to play h5, h6, rook h4, swing it across, uh, attack your queen, and lots, uh, lots of opening theory in this type of position. Fascinating line there, honestly. It's a lot, a lot of fun when you see top players uh, evolving or or re, you know, revisiting an opening that was considered to be not great, not a lot of teeth to it, but this really sort of passive bishop d2 move you pointed out. And normally in an imzo, white is not playing for this type of transition with d5 so quickly here. It's like almost you're trying to have like a Bononi space advantage or something and punish blacks. Uh, kind of cramped development on the queen side by by getting d5 so early you make that knight on b8 stuck which of course hurts the development of the rook so always fun right when you see uh, players evolving with the help of whatever whatever their supercomputer friends are at home okay hikaru is not interested in the uh, the pawn sacrifice attack plays b3 i was very curious about it whether he would go for the the sacrifice but he chooses the more solid and more traditional approach
Sweden today. We, we got what we've been waiting for, which is decisive results in classical chess. Will we have another one? That's crazy. Potentially five out of six classical decided games. Wow. Calm before the storm, we were thinking, with a rest day incoming. But yeah. yeah, it looks like the players were out for blood, throwing everything, all their energy into today. Note how White's knight here stopping the black rook from giving checks. Hikaru's found a really nice setup, but he's still struggling. He's still found no way forward. The oh, last. Wait, 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 wait. What? Wait, rook a4 check? Oh, the end game is. Oh, the knight inning's winning. Oh my god, I had a panic attack there. I was like, you just allowed the rooks to get traded, but it's, it's a winning endgame. The king gets to f5, but white gets to f3 just in time. Okay, so if rook checks and they trade on f4, white can actually take with the king, and you could also take with the knight and actually still be winning as well. Okay. Yeah, and very important, as you mentioned, Danny, that the white king is still within touching distance of uh, going over and protecting its pawn if the rooks come off the board. Uh, but right now, Pragnananda, has he built a fortress? That's the big question. Uh, that's the one thing that computers sometimes underestimate the uh, fortress effect. Does he just wait with his king, for example? Does he wait with his rook? Uh, okay, not on c6, somewhere on, this, on the uh, sixth rank. Oh, he waits. I don't, I don't think this is a fortress. I think that what we're going to see is Prague under time pressure really for the first time. It's been Hikaru who got way down on the clock, had to use the bonus time, 10 seconds per move, to get himself back back here. But now, Hik now Hikaru will be will be getting uh, Prague under time pressure. Okay, he offers a rook trade. Black has to say no right now. Uh, the white h-pawn still exists, so Black has to dodge this. The white knight might be reaching the f4 square. Maybe this is the dream, uh, just to kick the black king out to the corner. Okay, he's making progress, but very slowly here, Hikaru. He needs to be careful not to repeat by accident. Pragnananda is looking at the score sheet. Yeah, the last capture or pawn push was on move 60. So we've reached, we've made 20 moves without any progress. 30 more moves. It's a draw. Hikaru has to win a pawn by then. How do you break through on the sixth rank? This is... I, I know I said I didn't think it was a fortress, but... I'm... Uh, I'm eating my words. I don't see exactly a clear a clear path. If you could get the king to, to d7 or something and, and get around, there would be a way to to sort of outflank the f6 pawn. But yeah, if the white king could come up, maybe chances, but no. Okay, what has Prague played? He retreats. Yeah, maybe you could get the rook to b6 just to break the 6th rank blockade, but you have to be kind of really good with your timing there. Rook trades, you have to make sure that they don't allow black to draw on the spot. He's coming around from the side. He's tried other angles. This move immediately threatens knight f4 as well, and don't walk into king g6. Mm -hmm. The black rook needs to move. This is, this is tough. Now you, have, now you have less than 10 seconds, and Prague doesn't know how to deal with knight f4. It attacks the rook and he the pawn on h5. He's going to fly. Oh, he seconds. made a move with three seconds. This is so hard to defend. He's done so well to get even this far Prague, but he needs to keep it up. Hikaru head bob going. Four seconds, three seconds. Prague has to move. He does so with one second on the clock. Give but he doesn't time. have much time no, now. He needs to keep his rook safe. Prague, he's really living life on the edge. Oh no, 3-2. He gets checked. He gets checked, but here comes knight f4 check. No? Ooh. It's, still, it's still not a clear win. Prague is still defending with seconds on his clock. He actually gets back to 22 seconds with those back-to-back -back moves. And watch out, knight f4. King will shuffle to h6, and there's stalemate ideas on the board. Stalemate ideas, Gotta be ideas really indeed. careful. Oh, wow. Gotta be super careful here. King h6, Prague looks over at the camera. Hi, Prague. Okay, he's gotta move his king to h6, though, otherwise he drops a pawn. Three seconds. You gotta go to h6. <gasps> goes oh, forward. wow, what in the world? But rook h7 is checkmate. Rook h7 and then rook h5 next move. It's oh, Hikaru oh, sees it! Oh my gosh! It. And Prague and he knows. plays it slowly. Prague knew it as soon, he, he realized it as soon as he played king to f5 that he made a huge mistake after such a long defense. It's move 86 where Hikaru Nakamura takes the win against Pragnananda after such a tenacious defense. Oh my gosh! Wow. That was the tension visible on both players. Hikaru jumped out of his seat.